Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Pastor Daniel Ortiz of the Fort Concho Mission. You've tuned in to 100.5 FM Sunday Morning Glory. Let's start off right and let's say our scripture, Psalms 128, 118, 24. I'm sorry. Let's say that together. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's sing that. Do you see that? 
The umbrella changed the circumstances to where she can move around in the storm. Now, God's grace for you in the midst of your storm, it makes the circumstances manageable. I can get through this because of God's grace. I can make it because of Jesus has done for me. I know that I am redeemed. I know that I have the Lord. I know that I have free will and I have choices. And that choice is either to choose what is right or choose what is wrong. I can choose what is wrong and blow up and ruin the rest of the day. Or I can choose what is right and say, Lord, help me. I'm taking a deep breath and I'm saying, Lord, you're going to guide me. And with my next choice, I'm going to do better and be wiser. And even though I may have stumbled this week or last week, this next day, this next moment, this next minute, I want to do better. Because I know I am equipped because your word is good. Now, Ephesians reminds us in Ephesians chapter 5, 18. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. You see, that's one choice you can make that will cause a world of hurt and depression and anger and frustration because, first of all, it's very expensive and it blows your budget. And second of all, it could have repercussions with the words that are going to say out of your mouth because being drunk on wine, it being drunk might make you make a poor choice or decision Otherwise, if you were in sober mind, the scripture says in the second part of that, instead, be ever filled with the Holy Spirit. There's something that will fill you inside, that will satisfy your thirst, and that's living water, and that's Jesus' word. That's the scripture. Let's be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's ask God, Lord, help me with my choices, help me with my decisions, and help me with whatever's coming up on the horizon, that I may be able to handle it. Billy Graham had some good words, and I want you to listen to this because there's three specific points that I want to point out that were really good that he has in this message. Let Jesus go. I find that young people, wherever I go, are frustrated by failure. You know, depression can become very great in adolescence. When you're at the age between about 16 and 22 or 23, you can have terrible periods of depression, a sense of insecurity. You've not quite left boyhood. You've not quite gotten into maturity, in manhood, and in experience, and there can be great depression. And in our generation, where we have so much leisure time, you can be preoccupied with nothing. Amen. If you don't have a goal, or a motive, or a purpose, or a meaning for living, you can be preoccupied with nothingness, and you can be absolutely empty. And this leaves you depressed. Sometimes you're depressed and... I find... It can it can leave you depressed, but there was three things that you catch there. Fail, frustrated by failure was the number one thing that he spoke about. Frustration by failure. So many times we can be frustrated by a failure, or it can't even be a big failure. It could be a small failure, but we are so frustrated it takes over our attitude, our words, and our actions so easily and it messes up the rest of the day and you find yourself depressed because you're disappointed in your words and your actions. I should have handled that better. I should have said something differently. I shouldn't have been so harsh. I shouldn't have acted that way. And then you find yourself depressed because you're disappointed and you're frustrated by the failure of your own behavior or your actions, or your words. You're disappointed in that, and a lot of times we make it so hard on ourselves, we find ourselves in a sea of depression because we are disappointed in our own actions or how we handled a situation. Amen? Is that the truth? Is that the way it can be? We are frustrated with that. A lot of times we're frustrated by the waste of the day. Like he said, preoccupied with nothing. 
preoccupied with nothing. We just totally wasted the day. The whole day went by, and it's already 10 o'clock at night. And now, look, I've done nothing, and there's nothing to show for. Nothing was accomplished. All there was was an argument or a bickering, and still nothing was done. The room is unfinished. The clothes are not done. The clothes aren't washed. Something's done around the house. The yard hasn't been cut. Another day has gone by, and we were preoccupied with nothing. You see the tablet here? The scrolling, sitting here, and you're sitting there on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, preoccupied with nothing. How easily it can happen, and then you are frustrated at the end of the day because I just wasted a whole day that I can't get back. I was preoccupied with nothing. How easily it can happen. We have to be good stewards of our time. And have a goal and have a purpose. It's important. Successful people have goals in mind. And choose one goal and get it accomplished. My goal today is I'm going to wash the dishes. That's my goal today. My goal today is I'm going to get, I'm going to get the laundry done. My goal today is I'm going to get the yard done. One goal. Just choose one goal and accomplish it. Accomplish it and knock it out. Don't procrastinate and put it off. So easily the devil wants you to be procrastinated and put it off. And then that's where the frustration comes because it's 10 p.m. and nothing was done. So easily it can happen. And when that's done, all you do is beat yourself up here over and over. The scripture wants to remind you, yes, you're going to have bad days. Yes, there's going to be bumps in the road. But you know what? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 reminds us, speak to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual psalms, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed. We sing that song up here this morning. And then you count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. If we start singing those melodies and those songs in your heart throughout the day, it reminds you of his goodness. It reminds you where he's taking you from. And that's one step further in beating the blues. I want you to understand we need to beat the blues. You need to get over that frustration and that resentment you have towards yourself. The devil wants to remind you of that constantly because if he can keep you defeated, and depressed and beaten, you are ineffective for anything else. You are ineffective for your spouse. You are ineffective for your children. And you're certainly going to be ineffective for your boss at work. You're going to be down in all areas of your life. And then you truly will fail at life. And that's not God's plan for you. His plan is for you to have what? In John 10.10, 10, the second part, is an abundant life. An abundant life, but remember John 10, 10, the first part of that is the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He does enough distractions of its own during the day, but we're not going to let him steal that from us. We are going to be equipped with the word so we can know his method of attack because our Lord gave us a love letter, which is the word of the Lord, the Bible, to equip us and help us and say, look, be aware of these methods of attacks that will attack you of wasting your time and taking away of your purpose and what you have. And understand that there is a purpose for you each and every day and every moment. But Billy Graham said in that second part was preoccupied with nothing. And the third thing that he said in that was, and no goal or purpose. See, and the devil wants to make you think that you have no goal and no purpose. And even your own mind will try to tell you that you have no goal and no purpose. But you do have a purpose. And there is a goal in your life. And this morning we're going to talk about that. Beating the blues, Psalms 42 and 5, the scripture reminds us, why am I so discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? But look what he says. He comes up with the answer. I will put my hope in God. And I will praise him again, my Savior. Who's our Savior? Jesus. Jesus is our Savior. Let's do it with these.
these simple steps. First, let's believe the positive. The Bible reminds us so in Philippians 4 and 8. 8 says, finally, brethren, let's think of whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good of report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, what does it say? Think of these things. These are the things that we're supposed to be thinking of, good things, positive thoughts, and lovely thoughts, pure thoughts. This is what's supposed to be going on in our minds each and every day. And that helps us. There are too many Christians that believe in the negative rather than the positive. Now, it's okay to be realistic and say, I am planning for this A, B, or C to go wrong. And I will prepare for that. But I'm going to keep a positive attitude. Where we fall short and where I fall short a lot of time is I'm preparing for A, B, or C to go bad, and I let it take over. Instead of saying, okay, A, B, or C may go bad, but I'm going to be ready for it. I'm going to praise Jesus, and I'm going to say, I'm hoping I never have to do plan B, plan C. We're just going to go with plan A and say, Lord, he's in control. You know, I, I ate Pizza Hut three times this week. And I was in faith. Rushed, uh, I was there. Uh, <laughs> I was steaming out my pants in faith, saying, I hope they fit today. I sure hope they fit today in faith. I'm going to be positive. I'm going to be positive in faith while I'm ironing out these pants. They're going to button. I know I was bad this week and had pizza. We had people working in our house this week. We're like, no, I don't feel like cooking. They're putting in the AC and they're going back and forth through the kitchen and in the house. And I'm going to be positive. And then we had one guy fall through the bathroom, right through our putting in the AC, and he fell right through the roof. Oh, how to be positive through all of that. Wow. But you know what? It's okay. It got fixed. The air conditioner's going to be all right. It's a 10-year warranty, 10-year labor. It's all right. We're going to get it fixed. And they were positive, and they were nice about it. <laughs> yeah? And they were nice about it, and they're coming... Yeah, and, and it's okay. It's all right. Then I found out the young boy that was doing that, he was right across over, over here having Sunday school at Rush Street Ministries. They over here, and I was like, how can I be mad at that boy? He's trying. He's trying. But you know what? Those things happen. And if people in life and the devil say those are little failures. But you know what? If you dwell on them, yeah, they will make you a failure in your mind. But you say, no, no. I'm going to seek the positive. And you know what? It's going to get fixed. It's going to work out. And it has, and it has, and it has. And God comes through, and he takes care of us. He does. He does. Trust in him. Believe in the positive. Look for the positive. Doing well and looking for good in those circumstances. Number two, look for the purpose. Let's be reminded what the scripture tells us. 1 Peter chapter 5 and 10. This is what the Bible says. It says, God who shows you his kindness and who has called you through Christ Jesus to his eternal glory. Now this is it. This is it. Will restore you, strengthen you, and make you strong. That is one of the things. And support you. He will help you. He will restore you and strengthen you. God has a purpose for his people in all he allows. Remember, God allows every circumstance in your life. We will win over discouraged by looking for his purpose. Sometimes Christians are tested to strengthen and increase their faith. God promises to strengthen us. God, he allows things to happen to us in our lives, but he knows our limits. And last week, we spoke about he will never give you anything more than you can handle. Amen? He knows your limit. And if it happens to you, he knows you can handle it. If it has taken place in your life, God knows that you are strong enough and it will strengthen you and you can handle it. So the next time it happens to you or your child or your neighbor, you can encourage them and lift them up in love. That's a purpose there. He knows he can strengthen you. And number three, utilize the promise, Romans chapter 15 and 4, for everything was written in the past was written to what? Teach us. 
This scripture that we go through on Sunday morning, even though some of this was written 2,000 years ago, it's still relevant today and it's written to teach you. Let's consume this word. Let's eat this word and take it in so we can be strengthened but wiser. The scripture tells us so that through endurance taught in the scriptures and through encouragement, they provide we might have hope. All of this is also to strengthen your faith and give you hope for the next moment, for the next minute, minute. So I can say that hope equals, in the Greek it says, trust and confidence. That's what hope is there. It is to build trust and confidence so you can have even better trust and even more confidence in the Lord for the next situation that comes up. You are stronger we, as Christians, lack victory because we neglect God's promises. Therefore, we forfeit the benefits of God's word. We got to get into the relationship and stick with the word and not neglect the promises of God and forfeit the victory that we have with every situation that comes through. It may appear to be a failure here, but no, 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 God got the greater plan. And maybe it didn't work out right here, because there's something greater to come. Something even better or sweeter. It's the frame of mind. Are you catching on? Your frame of mind and renewing your thoughts. God's ways aren't our ways. And a lot of times when he answers that prayer, don't, don't worry. It may not be just the way that you think. It, it may be a different way. You see? But we worry. And we, oh, God didn't come through on this. God didn't help me out here. No, 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 you're not both. God's ways aren't our ways. And he may be answering that prayer, but just not the way you thought it should be. And I believe there's some of us that have gone through life, and we can look back 10 years and say, I am so glad God didn't answer what I wanted. Or I'm so glad it didn't happen that way. Or I'm so glad I didn't get that job after all. Look at that whole business closed down. And every, every this happened or that happened or this. I remember when I was working in the hospital, I didn't want to leave because I had so many good friends there and I was very comfortable there and I had a very good schedule. But I started seeing the writing was on the wall with certain things and God gave me that little still voice to go ahead and resign and cash out and take my benefits and cash out and be okay. But I did. I listened to that little voice. And you know what? It's not what I wanted to do. And I thought I was going to stick it out and stay. But no, 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 I didn't. God had a different plan. But I'm so glad I didn't do my flesh and stay. What happened was, is they ended up closing that hospital where I was at. One day they walked up and the doors, there was a deadbolt and a lock on the doors. And everything was closed up. And when everybody went to work that following day, it was all locked up. Nobody got their last checks. And everybody lost all their benefit pay. Everybody did. And they all had to find work elsewhere at a moment's notice. But you know what? I'm glad I didn't listen to my spirit and my flesh and just stay. And I'm going to stick it. I'm going to I want this job. No, no, no. A lot of times it's uncomfortable, but God gives you that little, small, little voice. And those prayers, you know, I prayed to keep staying there. I'm, well, you know, I hope it works out there. You know what? I'm so glad that prayer wasn't answered because there's so many things that made me up to this moment here. I may not be where I'm at today. I may not have had the relationships that I have today, or I may not have met my wife today. There may be a, a different, different scenario of events. But you know, that's how God works. Utilize his promises and know that sometimes these prayers are answered, but they're just not the way you think they should be. At that time, but God answers them, and he comes through, and a lot of times, it's even better and sweeter. It comes through even better and sweeter than I even planned it to be. But you know what? That's how he can in your life. But let's have that relationship and trust in his promises. Romans chapter 15 and 4, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. Let's cling to that. Let's cling to that word and say, no, no, no. This word is there to teach me, to lead me, and guide me. You know what your purpose is also, too? This is something right here, to encourage other people. Encourage other people. You're dealing with depression. You're dealing with the blues. 
You're dealing with strong. I hear, I'm going to give you the secret. This is this secret right here. This is the secret for healing. Go encourage someone. Go help someone. Go give a kind word. Do you know that is your, not just a band-aid, that's the medicine that will heal your hurting heart. Because it stops you from focusing on yourself to focus on someone else. And if you stop focusing on yourself, that pain and that hurt will start going away. And you'll stop focusing on that failure, that problem, that issue. But then you'll start to realize how blessed you are to bless somebody else. And even a blessing and word that doesn't cost nothing. That doesn't cost nothing to be kind and encourage someone. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and 4 reminds us who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. You know what? God's comforted us. He's taken us from, from the valleys and from the lows. Let's encourage somebody where he's taken us from, where he's helped us. And he's helped each and every one of you Christians while you were yet in your worst. The scripture reminds us. That's what Jesus died for, is for you while you were in your worst. So while you were in your worst, he died with But you know what? You can be encouraged, and you can encourage somebody else. I want to encourage you today I'm going to fight this failure. I'm going to fight this frame of mind. I'm going to be positive, and I'm going to encourage others because I now know, equipped with the word, that's my medicine to help myself, my spirit, my heart, and my mind. Encourage others. That's what it is. To go bless others. That's what it is. Because otherwise, we'd be selfish. Let's not be selfish today. Let's be selfless like Jesus was and for the ultimate price on what he did. Let's encourage others by reaching out in their time of problems and need. And it enables us to solve our own hurts and pains. Amen. We want to encourage other people. Which leads me to number five. Number five is sing God's praises. Let's keep a song in our heart this week. Let's keep speaking about Jesus. Let's sing about his glory, about his name, and let's tell the world how glorious he is. Let's start telling everyone about what Jesus has done for us in our life. Let's share his goodness, and that's where it begins this week. So let's start with choosing Jesus. Let's choose Jesus today. Uh, you can simply do that where you're sitting, right where you're at. Let's talk to him and have a moment with the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you did on the cross because what you did on the cross will enable us to break the chains of the blues, depressions, our thoughts, our failures. We're going to break those chains right now because we are claiming the powerful name of Jesus. Jesus, we understand what you did on the cross. Your blood was shed for the remission of our sins to take them all away while we were in our worst. We claim you today. We claim what you have done because what you did was you conquered the grave. You arose on the third day. You defeated the grave for me and for everyone because you love us. We accept you as our Lord. We accept you as our Savior. And we invite you in today. We ask you to be our Savior and Lord. From this moment forward, lead us and guide us in every choice and decision to be our Lord over us in our life. We pray this in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, if you said that prayer, we believe that you've been born again. We want you to encourage you. Find a Bible believe in church. You can come visit us. 500 East Avenue D, the Fort Concho Mission Church. We'd love for you to come and be a part of this fellowship. Start reading your word. Get into the Bible. Start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you don't have a Bible, come visit us. We'll give you a gift of a brand new Bible from our ministry to you. We want you to be encouraged and know that God is for you. He loves you. And until next week, you have a blessed day. In Jesus' name.